it's a win. It's a, it, it's most definitely a win. Um, not too much to be excited about. It's just ordinary run of the mill win. Uh, got to Dublin. Got out of Roscommon. Yeah, it was look a win as you said, Donald. Uh, we were safe anyway. You know, but we're definitely safe now. Now we've we have a chance to get in the final, which is the way the league is. Um, <coughs> Not firing in all cylinders, getting off the line, you know. You'll be more disappointed with Roscommon the way they played because of the fact they were fighting for their their spot in Division 1, you know. And uh, I think we were in control for most of it. Um, when they brought it back to two or three points, then, you know, we made a few substitutions. I think Paul Gaines' introduction, very impressive, two points. Later on the goal for Joe Connor. Um, you know, job done, uh, move on. The, the the downside, I think, is, is, is the injury to Jason Foley. Uh, Which looks fairly severe. It does. Isn't it? Looks fairly serious. You know, there was a lot of concern the minute he went down, um, limped off, and we are not. Uh, we haven't too many options now for the defence. Being honest with you, and particularly Jason. You know, he's he's in the spine of our defence. Mm-hmm. He's a huge. Uh, he's a huge player for us. And uh, at this stage, you know, he'll be. He'll be. It's a race against time. I'd say for the first round of the championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, but look, that's for another day. But we, we got the two points, and we move on. Mm-hmm. Um, Liam, I suppose, we're talking about the league and we're talking about how good it is in a competition, but is there a certain element in the league where different teams are, are looking at it differently? Roscommon looked like a team yesterday, were interested in parts. Kerry were kind of, you know, wanted to maybe develop their patience a, a lot more. I mean, the, the, the first point took two minutes. There was a couple of more three, four minute passages where Kerry held on to the ball, recycled beautifully, um, never really in any trouble or in, any doubt. Um, so was, was it a case of two teams even though they're in the league, they're preparing for championship. Well, I suppose there'd be, there'd be a bit of that, but I do think also the way the football has gone down, the way football has been played, like it was very subdued. You had, you had both teams who kind of... Is St. Patrick's Day a day for, for, for football? No, match? not really. I, I, I no, mean, would no. that be part of the... the, the that'd that'd be a lot of it as well, yeah. And I suppose, look, I do think, and there's been a lot of talk about the league, maybe the finals and stuff like that could be a thing they could scrap and whoever tops the league it'd probably make it more a bit a bit more interesting that whoever tops the league will, will, will get the cup and walk away whereas now you have to kind of teams saying no we don't want to get the final and it's, it's happening every year no, if we're going to be out the following week in the championship but we don't want to get the final you know that kind of stuff but no it was a very subdued kind of a game even though there was over 6,500 people like John said I thought Ross Common would come out with a bit more fire they didn't I think it was the 20th minute before they actually had, or, had their first turnover in the first half you know, and they were playing with the breeze. You know, they never came. They never came at us. You know, that kind of a way. And we were able to sit back and we were able to pick them off, and we were able to kick the, the few points and stuff like that in in the first half. But yeah, disappointing for Ross Common because I thought they were going to have give us because conditions were were poor enough. We had a couple of showers before the game, and there were monsoons. There weren't showers. They actually, it actually knocked the hoarding around around the field at one stage as well. And I said this is going to be a leveler here now. The weather, but no, they didn't come out. They just sat back and they left us. Like I said. It was 20, the twentieth minute before they laid their hand. Uh, they had their first turnover mm-hmm. on us, so they just kind of left us, left us have the ball. Yeah, let's look at Kerry So first of all, so we'll, we'll, we'll take the huge positives out of it. Um, ten different scores. Uh, they kicked one sixteen out of one seventeen. John, all from play. Yeah, some of the points we got were brilliant. Uh, Donald, great moves and that you know. And uh, the question maybe you'd ask if we were being negative is why we didn't go more direct. Because when we did, we caused a lot of trouble, you know. Um, I think Dara Roach playing aside full forward, he's, he's a fulcrum. You know, he stayed in there and, and David was, was in there for most of the time with him. But I thought that the use of the ball was very good. Uh, the runs from Gavin White from the half-back line. He's back, know, to, his old he's back to his old self. Yeah. He ran straight through the middle. You know, sometimes we might have said... Is he, he running more from the centre-back position, yes. though, than the half-back? You, you, you say the half-back, yeah. but I mean, he, he goes up the middle now, not on the wing, because in, in, early in the campaign... He went up the wing and he might have been put out over the side. But there's a lot more safety in, 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 if you're going pretty fast down the middle. There is, yeah. He's going up the middle. And, uh, you know, before he, he might get caught going into cul-de-sacs. But no, he's, he's sights up the man. Now he's going and he's not running into trouble. He's laying it off before it. Uh, causing a lot of trouble for the for the opposing defences. But look, we kicked some great scores. David kicked some great scores. Uh, as I said, you know, a lot of... Dad of mine had chipped in with his point. Shawnee Shea, Barry Dan got two points. Joe Connor impressive in the middle. Two midfielders were impressive. Know, now, yeah, yeah, you know, Joe's work rate 
he's a great engine. I think he's improving with every game, in fairness to him. And, you know, he's, he's, he's getting scores, even the goal. He was in the right place for Paul Ganey's pass. Mm-hmm. That shows that he's up there with the attack. Um, very, very positive. You know, maybe a negative is that when Russ Common ran at us, we were a bit open again. But look, it's it's we 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 won't zone in the negatives. We'll we we'll, we we got the two points. Mm. Uh, you know we're we're uh, we're safe in Division One. And uh, do we need to get to League Final? Do we want to get there? Possibly we can. Uh, maybe we don't. I'm not so yeah. sure. But it's a big ask in League Final. To be fair, I mean Kerry win, but because of that beating in Dublin, Liam. Uh, We'd want an awful to be guided by an awful lot, and, and, and still on the Proviso want Dublin to lose as well. Uh, fairly unlikely, but still, I mean, Kerry won four league games. Jack, I presume, will want to win a fifth one. Yeah, but I yeah, probably he will. I think that he like there's talks about that we should you know, go out and kind of we're hearing stories that there could be a B team put out against Scholar and all. That. I don't think Jack will because look, we probably don't have enough. We, d- we don't have enough players really? for the B team, <laughs> I mean, and plus yeah, we have. we're we're out in the championship <coughs> uh, in the end of April. The 20, I think on twentieth of April. So these are all games you want to be build, building towards. But um, um, yeah, no, it's I think next weekend. But if I was now, I will say a fantasy manager, mm-hmm. uh, I wouldn't. I like to be facing Derry or Dublin at the moment in the league final. I think I'd be keeping my powder dry and wait for maybe June, may, meet him in a quarter final or semi final or so down the line, and and have a good rattle off him. Then I don't think it'd do us any good because I still we I think we have a lot of polishing to be doing around the sides, and we need to be um, you know starting out a few things in our own in our own camp first. Yeah, l- 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 John, let's go back to midfield. I mean, it's something the listeners want to talk about nearly every other week. There isn't a single comment in today about the midfield so obviously that, that, that's a vote of confidence then yeah. there's nobody saying God we were beaten or we, we lost position or we had, uh, Joe O'Connor ends up with 1-1 one, one. he's actually scored 3-3 three, three since the start of the year 2-2 two, two in the championship mm-hmm. um, when you have a midfielder who's who's adding in a, a, a couple of scores like that that's a huge valuableness as well oh it is absolutely mm-hmm. and like they're you bought himself from Barry Dan you know they're, they're, they're helping out the defence but they're attacking as well and they have to be marked too not alone are they marking their own men I mean in the Smith and Tiger Rook with the two midfielders Fielders for us, come on. Indus Smith is an all-star. We know how good he is. Tiger Rourke is a very good player, but they, they weren't. They had no uh, influence in the game yesterday. Yeah. In fairness, I think that our lads dominated up and down the field. They chipped in with the scores, but I think that they're they're uh, you know it just goes to show like that. We will say with the Admiral O'Connor two out of three mm-hmm. they're, they're your midfielders so every game they get I think it's it's trying to get that jersey and you could see it and I think Barry Dan you know possibly unlucky last year to be fair but uh, he's very consistent very honest uh, great work rate two points yeah he can pick you a know, point he as can well, pick actually, a point yeah. as well and he got a fantastic mark in the 34th minute as well you know, yeah, right the sky. and that's what I like about the midfield and we've spoke about it they were engaging the defence yesterday yep. you know um, going back to the Dublin game Dublin never marked us like I, I said this here that it was the second half that Joe kind of realised that Jesus there's no one marking me here I can go through next yeah. he, he kick 1-1 one, one. but he handled a pile of ball yesterday in the, in the first half as well he was get, he was getting stuck in it he wasn't just sitting back he was hitting the gaps he was drawing the defender and he was passing the ball and he was creating options for the for the carry forwards which we need we need we need carry players engaging the defence because we can't be looking at David and, and Shawnee the whole time we need other fellas to step up yeah. and, and, and midfield yesterday was it 1-3 from midfield yesterday mm-hmm. Speak to us about uh, a, a man who was a big game for him yesterday Daryl Roach uh, inside full forward we, 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 he's been on the cusp he's, he's been yeah. kind of in and out and around uh, he needed a big game yesterday maybe didn't feature heavily on the scoreboard but he provided the most assists in three out of the, the, the whole amount of scores so yeah. I mean he, he's quick hands he, he won that ball um, and I presume like as Jack said afterwards the inside line is the line that gets the most marking so at times maybe it is the half forward line that have to crop up with the scores how did he work yesterday I Darrow thought, I thought Darrow was you know what he was he was a focal point in there mm-hmm. usually when we have David at 14 our two corner forwards are kind of coming out the field in there but we had Darrow in there and David was kind of in around in around him then as well so we had a kind of a good stationary full forward line that we had a target and plus it was keeping the Roscommon defenders honest because if David was coming out there was two of them watching David which we were leaving Darrow inside alone because he was he was he never came outside the twenty one yard line. And I think that's something we'll come in towards championship we will need. I presume someone. that's by design, does it? That's by design. Yep. Yeah. To that, stay in. That's by because he he's a target and I know it's probably hard to see it in the radio or maybe in television at times, but the runs he was making, even though he might not got the ball, but he was pulling maybe two, three defenders at times with the runs because he they were making the great runs, which was creating space for other players. Mm. Like 
with the start of the league when David was in there alone you had three players sitting on top of him and there was not a, with, you need bodies in there that you can have a target and I thought Dara was was a good target I know he he came off in the second half and Paul kick, came on and he kicked his two points then after that but that's what we need we need fillers that will work their socks off if it's well, 40 minutes or 30 minutes or 50 minutes and then replacements coming on mm-hmm. but it's not a surprise that Dara playing well because he, he's been the standout player in the county in championship, county championship. Yeah. You know, he's a kicker and proceeded into last year county you know. championship player of the year last year yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. a fine player, and yeah. he definitely has. And a he's a hard player. man to mark because yeah. he's low to the ground when he gets the ball. You know, he's and he he is wanting, and he's head. He wants to go to goals, mm-hmm. which is something uh, that I think we we need someone like that inside with with yeah. David. He, he, I suppose he needs an extra couple of games so obviously yeah. fingers crossed he'll be there for the Galway game um, Darren Moynihan moving slightly out to probably a, a role that he, he's probably more fond of at 12 John. yeah look Darren Dar- Dar- Moynihan the, the, I suppose from his minor days he's worked great mm-hmm. you know he, he he was compared to like Sir Brian Doher at, at minor level linking between defence and attack uh, popping up with an odd score here and there now but his he's work rate is going to be very important because we need that you know uh, our, our half forward line have a huge part to play you know because they, they'll have to link they'll have to be back working extremely hard cutting down the space behind but then they'll have to be available to link with the attack and Dara's he's, he's going well he's, a, he's had a great league campaign mm-hmm. in fairness to him you and know, he's chipping up an extra point here and there as well so I mean like he, he could always score I suppose in the last number of years the scoring side of it has reduced maybe there's a lot more kind of work rate and production the whole lot but he needs to pop up with the odd score every now and again he does and I think look you mentioned there about Jack the inside line are going to be mark very tightly of course we have David in there but if we can get our half fab line on midfield kicking the few scores you, you look at the good teams the dubs like you know when Tyrone were going well when we were winning all Ireland's, you have a, a, a good mix of scorers you're not depending on one or two and I think Liam has said it several times when it comes to the championship against the good teams against the top teams there's five or six teams there look the Dublins the Derrys the Donegals the Armas, the Mayos when you meet them in championship football you have to have a good spread of scores because they have players to mark our marquee players yeah. and then where are we going to get the scores from? You'll do it against Roscommon and the rest of these teams but that's the level we have to get to. Mm-hmm. Um, the Cliffords we talk about every week I mean if they don't bring home 15 points they, they, they've had a bad <laughs> game. Um, we possibly didn't see as much as we normally would see of them. Um, were they kind of maybe working away in second and third game and relaxing the, well, as well? It, it, I mean, it looked like that like Paddy didn't kick his they, they were engaged obviously in the game but yeah. they didn't need to do a whole pile more. No, uh, I think it was the 27th minute or 22nd minute was it when Paddy kicked his first point in the second half but he played a pile of ball and he did the usual you know, a, lot, a lot of hard grass but like that he never really had to step up to when the, like Roscommon never really put that great amount of pressure even though I'd looked at one stage in the second half with three points to go that the, there was a bit of momentum the crowd got behind them but we went down the field in and we kicked another point and another point and we went to five points up then again but um, yeah David was inside I suppose the penalty was, is going to be the big talking mm-hmm. point you know, um, we'll talk about that in, the, in a second because there's a few comments coming in about that we'll talk about that and we'll talk about Jason Foley as well let's go back to the halfback line so I want to go through the kind of the player review um, a big day again, John, for Sean O'Brien. I mean, he, he, he seems to have found himself in a position now in five. It's, he started two in a row. Um, he looks kind of steady there. I mean, he, he's an out for Shane Ryan's kickouts, uh, and he's not afraid to have a go at his shot either. No, no, he's he's fitting in well. Do you know he's learning? Um, he's he's uh, he's he kicked a great score again. Mm-hmm. Same as similar to Tyrone. And that's very interesting. To use the word learning because he is learning. But the, the, the way the championship comes along, you don't get time to learn on the job. You just you get thrown exactly, in and you. Yeah. Either survive or you don't survive. That's why the league for, for new players is very important to bed them in. He has done well. He's definitely an option for the championship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because like we've often said before, we need to get a couple of defenders in particular. We're all, I think we're okay up front numbers wise, but defensively, you know, you need somebody coming in. His physique, as you say, he's an option for the kickouts. Uh he's he's an athlete. When he starts running, when he starts going with the ball, he's difficult to stop. And, uh, you know, down the road, I think he'll definitely have a part to play and it's great to see, uh, see him going well. He has the confidence, you know, after the first game or two, you know, you could have had questions. He's recovered very, very well, and maybe wing back is his spot. Mm-hmm. Two gentlemen, no men on the team as well yesterday, Liam. Um, talk about Tyg Morley. I, I haven't seen Tyg Morley attack as much or go forward as much, uh, and very comfortable on the ball yesterday as well. Yeah, Tyg is very comfortable, but he was an attacking option because his men kind of sat back in, in front of the in front of the Cliffords, and that's what we need. You know, if you if you are a free carry player, you need to be engaging the the opposition, and and, and Tyg is well well able to do that. 
that. But uh, yeah, our half back line, Sean, I agree with John. Sean O'Brien seems to be a, a, an option there. Like when you look at, I suppose, and he's po- not half a the positive. I suppose out of the league so far would be like the Sean O'Brien, the Killian Burke. Yep. You know, the, the, these two guys, you know, they're young fellas, Joe O'Connor, obviously, three. Mm-hmm. You know, these are guys that will offer you something towards towards the, the latter end of, of, of the year. And I think it's important that we did unearth two or three players. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, and the, the league is a great is a great is a great place to to polish up players. Like I said, it's hot and heavy now at the moment with a lot of games. But uh, fellas will be fellas will be learning. Yeah, and let's go back to to, to, to a guy who, who's improving and improving and improving all the time. Um, Gavin White. Oh yeah, Gavin um, seems to be back to his best again. He, he really does. I mean, yeah. obviously, look. I suppose after the All Ireland last year, it took a blow to confidence and the whole. And he was injured then as well. And I suppose and, no, and, no. And, and come back, but he now is getting to the Gavin White that people would have regarded as the, the real deal maybe a year ago two years ago yeah the spring is back in the legs again you know with the last, with the last couple of weeks we were kind of looking at him and he found it hard to get away from players but I suppose to give the man the benefit of the doubt he's coming back from injury but he seems to be back to his best now since the, in the last two games the Tyrone game you know, when he gets the ball now when he goes past the player he's actually getting them two or three steps ahead of a player which he wasn't getting with the with earlier on in the league and he's like he's he's he's, he's his own main man to to get the ball of the defence up to the forward line as as quick as you can and you know so he's going to be um, yeah he's he's a, he's, a, he's a big weapon for us you know we we need Gavin playing playing well in the half back line because he he draws so much attention as well when when he when he puts it on his foot. Yeah, the two cornerbacks were never under any massive pressure. Graham Sullivan and Paul Murphy, um, steady, but you know, influential on, on the game when they needed to be. Yeah, you? there's no doubt. I think Graham Sullivan has been one of our players of the league in yeah, fairness yeah. to him. So consistent, you know, doesn't put a foot wrong. Paul Murphy has come in against Tyrone again yesterday. You know, he nullified Dara Canavan against Tyrone. Mm-hmm. No mean feat to be fair to him. Huge experience. He'll be fine. And his experience has, seems to be shining through now at this stage. I mean, his, you know, yeah. he, he he can get there on time. He seems to be able to yeah. cover. Uh, and like he isn't six foot four, like I mean, so so he has to work a little bit harder. He, his positional sense is excellent, and you know, on the ball he's very good. He's he he rarely gives the ball away. To be that fair, that was a good full forward line by by Ross Conley. Like yeah. you were talking, Mort, 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 and Craig. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, that they were they, they were their main, and they we kind of quietened them. Yeah, and they were through Mort as well, and they were through Mort, which is a big uh, a big, big call. Big, like big, yeah. Full back line has been going very well. Jason's been yeah. very solid as well, you know. And and as we said, look, we hope that the injury isn't too serious because yeah. he's a huge loss to that defence. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about that um, after because we have a lot of comments to come through there, particularly on the Jason Foley one. But one that, that's particularly cropping up there as well, the penalty. Mm-hmm. I mean, to me, it was a goal. It was a goal, yeah, yeah, yeah. And t- I don't know why he caught, why he said because he didn't blow the whistle until the ball was in the net. It was different if he blew the whistle well before he struck it. Like, but there's no doubting Shawnee Shea was fouled on the line, but yeah. at you give stage, the advantage. The, the ball was in the net. The ball was in the net, and you give the and the attacking player should get the advantage. Yeah. Yeah. If that happened out the field and and he was fouled off the ball and maybe held. The, the quick hands that got the ball away it'd the be advantage be played the advantage yeah, yeah. like this no. is something that's cropping up Liam referees one club level is one thing but at inter-county level these referees look yeah. they're supposed to be the top referees in the country not good enough to be fair you know if we had lost that if it was a championship game we lost it yeah. I mean there was no reason why he should have given the penalty even in the hurling in the weekend Limerick and Galway you know a red card for the helmet which was right but there was two high challenges which should have been red cards and they weren't. It is the inconsistency is not good enough and it's frustrating for players and for managers as well. And it's something definitely that will have to be looked at going to championship. We'll get to that. But the penalty was still missed, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It was it was uh, it was one of those ones if it went into it was a bit of an Irish jig job, wasn't it? Went it? into the top corner, you would be raving about it, but yeah. look it didn't. <laughs> and I had this conversation with Joe at half time yesterday, like yeah. I just can't understand like into or GF goalkeepers are not like soccer goalkeepers they don't practice diving no they're not going to go they're, they're not, not going, going to, and yeah. I can't understand why we can't put the ball on the ground yeah. and roll it, I roll it with power into the corners yeah. because it's probably the weakest spot of a GA goalkeeper is diving down to his right or left yeah. but like he didn't have to dive at all yesterday anyway because it was gone up to the scoreboard well, he's been he, the bar, so he came yeah. out and David was smiling after it was that kind yeah. of game you know, it, was that that yeah. Kind of, yeah. it was kind of a relaxed game uh, John Kennedy back in your day if, if some guy done that during Mikos time taking a bit of a penalty 
And what happened? <laughs> there was quite a number of penalties lost in all time to Old <laughs> Bester and Mason, yeah. in fairness. And know. big ones as well. I oh, mean, big ones, yeah. Was and some, some, of the best players, some of the best players they ever yeah. played the game. Yeah. You know, so like it's, it does happen, Donald. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's, it's probably one of the hardest kicks in the it game. Is. It is, yeah. Because like the the goalkeeper can be fairly big and the, the goal is not like a soccer goal goal where it's, it's a bit a bit wider, all right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's a hard kick. Yeah, it's a skill we'll all have to learn, of course, with all the games going to penalties. Listen, uh, after the break, we'll catch up with Dan Kearney and then we'll get on to talk about Jason Ford. And we we'll look at Galway for next week. Now, the Kerry ladies had a big win in meat, uh, and as a result of that, they're slowly edging close to a return to a Division 1 league final as well. And uniquely enough, of course, they are playing Galway in the last round of their league as well. Dan Carney joins me on the line. Uh, Dan, it's amazing the, the league at the start because obviously with the two buys, it was like we'll survive, we'll survive. But we're getting close to the to the stage now, Dan, where you know we, we can see the tunnel and the other end of the tunnel, uh, a trip to Crow Park, um, and this mead victory goes an awful long way towards that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I suppose, look, the lads did come over there at the start. They said, look, we're using the, the league as for experimentation. Um, our focus is going to be on the championship later on the year. We're going to focus our training on that. And uh, they, they have done that, but uh, I suppose it shows the, the quality that they have now, that they've they've found themselves in this stage, you know, at this stage even. Like, I mean, to go up to meet... Um, and beat them so handily, like, you know, beat them by 13 points. It was a, f- a phenomenal win by Kerry. And, uh, you know, I think they'll they'll be looking at it in kind of a, a different context now. You're going into the last game, uh, you come out with a win, and uh, you're back in Croke Park again. And, uh, you know, I mean, you can't be in Croke Park enough times, really, I feel. And, uh, you know, absolutely, they're, they're on an upward trajectory. And they were very, very impressive uh, yesterday, Donald. I thought they, they, they played some fantastic football after a, a, a slow enough start. Uh, but once once we got into the second quarter, they started motoring and uh, they, they literally blew meat away on their home patch. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we're looking to score. I mean, 115 is, is, is massive shooting and massive scoring, particularly if you look at all the, the laser results throughout the week. Louise Murray Hurtig back to a starting berth. I mean, obviously, she was always going to go in there once she was good and ready. Uh, eight points, two frees, hugely influential. But also, Emma Deneen with 1 2 and Hannah O'Donoghue with three points. I mean, that full forward line, they scored 113. Yeah, it's motoring well, isn't it? I mean, they, they're all very clever to treat them. They seem to have a, a very, very good understanding. And uh, they're all really good footballers. And, of course, look, you said it, Louise. Like, I mean, we could be harking on Louise all the time, but she deserves every bit of praise she gets. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, she was back in there again yesterday. I mean, she had the ball over the bar after 16 seconds at the start of the game. And straight away, then she was organising the defence uh, for the kick-out. You know, they were going zone, they were press, you know, pressing up because Kerry had a very, very strong win behind them. But they're a lovely full forward line. Their movement is absolutely excellent. Uh, I was watching their movement yesterday, and uh, you know they have, like I said, they have a basic understanding of the three of them. Like, and uh, you know, one of them is making space. The other one is coming out to get the ball, leaving leaving the the, the other two inside, and uh, they kind of. Uh, they kind of rotate that a small bit, like, and they're they're they're, they're playing really, really well to treat them. And of course, having the experience of Louise inside, and uh, like I said, she's calling the shot, she's telling them where to go, and uh, like that. Emma Deneen has been a revelation since she came back uh, this year. You know, took her goal very, very well. Might have had another one, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, she shows very, very well. So she's she's giving a kind of a, another dynamic there in the full forward line. So yeah, very, very pleasing the the, the full forward line the last day with that kind of scoring. Yeah. Daniel Leary came on of course um, and, and shots kind of saved there as well so th- th- there was a number of goal chances maybe left behind as well so if the lads were looking at something th- they might be looking at this yeah, I suppose, uh, yeah, you, you alluded to it there. Like, there was, there, there was two goal chances. I suppose M- Emma's one was probably the, the easiest, I suppose. Like, it was a, a fantastic move. Went through the hands, uh, yeah, Kaylee, Kaylee Cronin, who had an outstanding game. Kieran McCarthy and Larry and, uh, were involved in passing the side into, into Emma. And, uh, unfortunately, with the goal of Mercy, it was nearly easier to score it. She put it wide. So that, I mean, Kerry were up a point at that stage, you know, and, you know, in a tighter game, you're going to rue those misses. Danielle right at the start of the second half, uh, she, she came on at half time, played really, really well overall, but uh, I suppose, was it a very good save by Monica McGurk, or did mm-hmm. she hit it straight at her? Monica saved it with her legs anyway, but there were, t- there were two good goal chances, and I suppose if you think they missed four goal chances in, in the, the previous game, like, you know, th- those, those chances will have to be taken. But I suppose on the other side of it, you'll, you'll say to yourself, look, we're creating the chances. Uh, and uh, particularly against uh, a meat defence yesterday that was, was pretty packed, did a lot of bodies back there. So 
look, they'll, they'll continue to work on that, I'm sure, and hopefully it'll come right. But in a big game, you really have to take those chances. And I suppose they have two big games coming up now with, with Galway and hopefully a final after that. So if the goal chances present themselves, they really will have to take them from now on. Like, you know, and particularly ones uh, which are more or less happens like Emma's was really like, you know, she really should have stuck it. Uh, so it's, it's something, again, to work on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, something that doesn't seem to be needed, a whole pile of work is the defence. Uh, one point conceded from play yesterday uh, against a team that won the all Ireland two years ago. Uh, and I know there's, there, it might be a little bit watered down to the, to the strength of, of what they had. Um, but there was still an awful lot of huge recognised names on that Mead team as well. Um, but one point from play conceded, I mean, th- th- that's some victory for the defence, isn't it? Absolutely, and I mean, you, you you look at the three girls up front that you mentioned, and and they get the plaudits because they're only scoring. But the defence was absolutely outstanding. I mean, Emma Dogan, I've never seen her ha- have a quieter game. And between Eilish Lynch and and Kira Murphy, they totally, you know, took her out of the game completely. Katie Cronin was outstanding at centre half back. Um, Ashley O'Connell was driving forward. She's strong. She's fit. She's a serious uh, player now. On, on this Kerry team and you must remember that that defence uh, was without uh, Deirdre Carney uh, Kira O'Brien caught Lynch only came on uh, on as a sub you know the two, two, another two girls are carrying uh, I think slight hamstring knocks like so it's really like it really really looking good uh, in the defence and I suppose they're, they're covering and their know-how and I suppose that's come from the experience of playing together for the last couple of years and they have a system in place and even their, their scramble defences as they call it in, in, in rugby like they, they were getting across the were getting that last ditch ball, you know. They were getting on the hand, the hand on the ball when when they looked in danger, and that work rate really was the cornerstone of the 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 carry performance. And another thing I liked as well, Donald, and I suppose it, it, it kind of similar to the defence because they were going back and helping out. You had a midfield of of Anna Galvin and Mary O'Connell, and you had Lorraine Scanlon playing wing forward and kind of coming into the middle. And I thought that was a lovely. Um, sorry, there was a lovely dynamic between uh, them. You know, they were covering the centre and making it very, very difficult for for me to attack. After the first quarter, me did trouble them in the first quarter. Uh, their running game had Kerry in a small bit of trouble. Once they settled down, though. Uh, me got nothing after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we mentioned Daniel Leary, we mentioned Emma Duggan, um, I suppose ironically or, or maybe so, um, the HEC um, championships were on over the weekend, uh, of course a fantastic win for MTU Kerry um, heading up to the Giles uh, from, or heading to the O'Connor from the Giles even, um, that's going to be massive for Kerry Lays football. Absolutely massive, you know uh, heading into o- O'Connor Cup and and, and deservedly so. I mean, the, that that was a really good team that won the the Giles Cup the last day. And of course, Danielle ended up on on, on the team of the championship uh, out of it. Like you know, and that that show you how, how well she played all through as well as her two goals in the final against Maynooth. So I mean, it's going to it's given a prestige, I suppose, for for girls. They 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 they'll say, yeah, if I go to MTU Kerry, uh, I can play O'Connor Cup. I don't have to to go to UCC or or, or UL or wherever. You know, if they're ambitious and that side of things and playing top class football. So. Yeah, it is massive and it's going to be very exciting for MTU Kerry to be playing in the O'Connor Cup uh, next year and uh, like I suppose if you look at it from a Kerry point of view and you look at UCC Mary O'Connell was in the middle of the field uh, for them and uh, you know very unlucky to lose out the final to DCU after extra time but I thought Mary had an outstanding game mm-hmm. for UCC and, and she won far off player the match in my opinion but unfortunately she finished up on the wrong side but that was great to see it was great to see uh, Mary mixing it at that level and uh, you know unfortunately didn't come out with her medal but that's, that's the way it goes I suppose that sport I suppose UCC could have had it won uh, in normal time but, but they, they really left it after them but uh, it was great to see the Kerry players uh, playing so well mm-hmm. A big congratulations too to Marie Bennett of course of Spa um, she captained yeah. uh, MTU Cork believe it or not to, to, to win the ledge <coughs> uh, with Kerry did more age and uh, mm-hmm. a really good full back type cornerback uh, player like you know and I'm uh, you know, and, and delighted to see her uh, captaining them because she has serious le- le- leadership qualities as well so she has mm-hmm. uh, Finally then we'll wrap up uh, the, the maths are quite simple Kerry must beat Galway next week um, and it's a game next week that uh, I've seen posted on social media by the Kerry ladies that it's in Fitzgerald Stadium as well Yeah it's on after the Kerry men's game uh, I, think, I think the Kerry men's game is on a quarter to two 
and uh, Kerry Ladies then is on a quarter to four. So a huge day like uh, for for the Kerry Ladies, they can cement their place in the National League final. And uh, you know, obviously there's going to be a good crowd there for for the men's game. And and please God, uh, people will stay on and uh, watch the ladies as well because you know they're a very very good side to watch. I've said I've said it lots of times before. They play a very very nice brand of football. They you know, they sacrifice every bit as much as, as the men do and they deserve to have a crowd uh, cheering them on and uh, hopefully people will stay on and, 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 and they'll be well worth uh, giving a good shout to they're wearing a Kerry jersey. They're, they're some of the greatest players that have ever worn a Kerry jersey uh, playing for this Kerry team presently and uh, hopefully the crowd will show their appreciation and, and stay on and uh, watch them uh, make a National League final for the second year in a row. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll hopefully, and we'll build from Crow Park freezing above with the, the Seagulls as well. Then, Carney, maybe in a couple of weeks' time <laughs> watching down at home, um, which is a fantastic sight. Then, Carney, thanks very much. Uh, Dan has to rush off to, believe it or not, training <laughs> for 7 o'clock, so we won't hold you any longer. Um, is that, that's kind of fantastic news as well, Liam, that last year we, we were kind of maybe seeing and then seeing that, you know, Kerry Lays were in Division 1 and we won it and the whole lot. But now we're cementing that place. We, we, we're consistently getting back where our, our performances are good. Um, and cantering through the league, I know people will say, look, they, they, they got the draw with Mayo. Mayo, of course, produced a, a, a stirring performance yesterday against our man, nearly took him out of it as well. Um, but overall, I mean, things on the up, people must be happy. Very much so. And like like Dan said, uh, the management sat down at the start of the year and said they were going to use the league as as a building tool and you know, and it just shows the calibre of a player that's coming through at lady, ladies football when they're going to be hopefully contesting another league final and very close to it and still experimenting with players uh, as, as they go so all things good and I, I would agree with that I hope the Kerry supporters look I know it's 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 a quarter to four game but you're going, we're going to be in there anyway so and these are and I've been at a lot of their games for the last couple of years as well it's a very entertaining game of football the ladies football and some of these players are, are I, and I would agree probably some of the best Kerry ladies footballers that we probably ever see and I know and we and, and that's a big statement because we had a lot of, of very very good ladies footballers so some, some of these it'd be well worth staying for the extra hour and a half to watch these and I think they deserve our support as well because look they're a green and gold jersey as well and they deserve massive backing Fair play. Let's get back to the real stuff again. <laughs> all, all, all the people giving out. Um, we wish to carry ladies, of course, the very best playing Galway um, next Sunday as well. A win and they are in a league final. Uh, most likely against Armagh, but Dublin are there as well. Um, now, hi lads, there's about five or six teams that can win all Ireland. Is this not a bad reflection on football? Or maybe this is the way it always was from Pod. I think the way it always was. Yeah. John, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah like sure. I presume when John Kennedy was picking up free All Irelands, there was probably less than five or six teams that could win the All Ireland, was there? I think it's the same, though, and being honest with yeah, you. Do you know, yeah. like, you had the dubs that time, and maybe Monaghan or, or, no, or Down, you know, and Cork, Cork were probably the second best team in the country at the time, but the fact of the format. You, you beat him in a muscle final they were gone you know but like it's 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 uh, that's why the league is so competitive is that you know the teams are at their own level and all the all the divisions are good because you know there's very little between a lot of the teams but you know we've said it before look at Munster like you know Limerick Tipperary Watford they're, they're in, a, in a poor state at the moment Clare have booked a trend with, with Mark Fitzgerald in fairness you know doing a great job with them, yeah. doing a great job they're heading to Nuri I think next week and if they win they're promoted um, but and Cork have, have consolidated their position in Division 2 but look I've said it earlier on that tonight you, there's 5 or 6 teams and Sam McGuire will come from one of those teams yeah. and, and it's, it's to be at the level that those teams are at to win the championship that's what's required Right Liam named the 6 teams they come in the, it this year Well obviously in Munster we've carry Okay, five yeah. more. Leinster, you've volley Dublin. Four. Realistically, you've volley Dublin. Okay, four yeah. more. I'd be picking three out at North that I would not like to play. I yeah. Derry be one. Yep. Armad be two. And I wouldn't like to be facing into Donegal in a, in a quarter final because I do think they will be kind of up for it this year. And then you're looking at Mayo. No Galway. No, I think Galway have. You no, know, they have. They've. They haven't. It's they haven't kicked on. Back, they haven't kicked on since the All Ireland final yeah. that we beat that we, in twenty two. And no, they've. And look, they're they're a pro co- football county as well. And you know, they're all great county for uh, you know footballing. You yeah, know, yeah. They go out and they play football. We always. But no, they have never kicked on since since twenty two. But, but I think they're injuries. Fight, like. They're in, I agree with you, Liam. Yeah. But I think the Galway's injuries are horrendous this year. Yeah. Do you know? I was just look. Shane Welsh, Damien Comer, Matthew Tierney, Rob Finnerty, Sean Kelly. 
uh, Killian McDade. Yeah. That's the spine of your team. Like. That's the spine of your team. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your team yeah. you're, you're not going to win a championship without those. You need all of them to be going well, to be competitive. But still at the same time, on a given day, I, I don't think they could win Sam McGuire, but they could, they could rattle a big team though. Yeah, they could knock a big team out. They right? could knock a big team out of yeah. it, yeah. Right, uh, lads, I hope the nasty cynical foul that injured Jason Foley will be investigated and the offending player will get disciplined for his nasty actions. Uh, obviously, uh, that comes in the wake, I suppose, of, I suppose, it, it happened in the game, the, yeah. the, the, the footage is there. I mean, Roscommon faced an anxious wait, according to the Irish examiner, uh, to learn if Carl Hennigan is handed a retrospective suspension for an incident leading to Jason Foley's injury enforced departure uh, from Sunday's Division 1 game in Dr. Hyde Park. Now, before we go any further, um, he didn't leave the field due to that injury. He left the field for, 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 for an injury. Say it yeah, we'll, yeah we, we, we can't link him. We can't yeah. link him, to be fair. <laughs> you're, you're not scientists, you're not doctors. Um, but, <laughs> but, it, but we're it, not blowing the courthouse either. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's where we could be very short. Be. Um, we, won't, we won't be going there in a hurry. Um, but the incident itself, and just isolate it and, and, and don't link it to an injury. It was fairly cynical and fairly nasty. Well, not nice. Yeah, yeah not nice to see it. To see it after that. We didn't see it at, at the time, obviously, but yeah. when, when, when you saw it in the video and uh, the stuff that's gone around, it's it's not a nice thing to do to anyone. Yeah. Like, no. regardless what team, there's no place in the GA or in any no. sport for that. You know, hard teething and stuff is fine, but cynical and cynicism and dangerous tackling, that's not good. Yeah. It was kind of cowardly. I mean, he, he was on the ground. He wasn't facing him. He, oh. he, he could have put his foot anywhere, but he decided... To he was no, going to lend. That's, that's not yeah. nice, you and know, and whether there's intent or not was done, and, and, you know... And I do think, like John said it about the referees, though, we've said it here a couple of times about the TMO, you know, there's cameras at every match. Mm-hmm. You know, these things can be looked at instantly. But would know, a big decisions, have that the in, in a hurry yesterday. He would have because any any would I'd, even I'd, be looking for it. Th- but that's the TMO's job. Like if a player's down injured, there's a reason why the player's injured. So you just review that maybe twenty seconds. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the same with the penalty. Like why couldn't we go upstairs? Why no, take twenty seconds? I know people say it slows down the game, but at the moment the game can't get any slower because the ball's over <laughs> back the field. It can't get any slower. If anything, it might add to the whole thing. So I do think. Like we have cameras everywhere, we're falling over them uh, when we go to county grounds. That, that this thing could be could be brought in because inter county football now is a big business. Yeah, it's a big business, and you have Kerry. Who, and this could look. This is a league, I know, but this can happen in championship as well. You need to get the call right. And Robbie, that ninety nine times out of hundred, I know VAR they will be all kicking, me, but you get the call right at the end of the day. And I think these things can be looked at. Yeah, but I think Liam, we've been to several games, at one, and we've we've discussed this. A linesman, he's more. He's obsessed now with keeping the manager where he should be, yeah. keeping the subs off the line, a lad going in with a drop of water, he can't go in. But there's there's serious incidents in front of their eyes and they don't it's see them. It's all left to the referee. It's left to the referee. It's all left you know, the I think it's crazy yeah. stuff. And like you said, a game shouldn't be decided or sh- uh, it shouldn't be won or lost with a bad mistake by officialdom. Yeah. It shouldn't be. There's too much going in. Too much money being spent, and I and, think and it, the, it's all there. It's all the there. Cameras yeah. are all there, so it's not it's not a big it's not it's, it's not a big deal to to get it started. Well, that instance is going to be investigated anyway. I'd imagine by the CCC, uh, they'll have plenty of I suppose footage and television cameras and everything. Uh, Mossy, uh, thanks for dropping a line to us uh, and his guest when you talked about how slow the game was. Mossy is along the lines. That was desperate stuff yesterday, <laughs> lads. Uh, you couldn't call it football. All defensive lateral passing in the first half. The second half wasn't a whole lot better. It's terrible to see Gaelic football. Ball going down this road in Kerry. Well, I suppose it's yeah. not necessarily in Kerry. It's, it's, it's that's the game of football, now. Yeah, and it, it and that's what was surprising. I thought Ross Common that they needed the points. They'd come out and they have a right go at us, and they had the breeze in the first half. And next thing we looked out the field, and they had fourteen men out uh, behind the ball, and not only the fourteen men and behind the ball. It was the twentieth minute before they actually laid a finger on us. Yeah. You know, it was before the first turnover. They were just sitting back. We kicked six from six. <laughs> and they still didn't come out and it just and, and you can't blame Kerry for that because Kerry can't be kicking the ball into 14 men oh. yeah, so they were going to hold on to it and we, 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 picked, we picked them off but yeah but that's unfortunately that's the way football has gone that's the way it is gone. It's gone yeah. it, it, it has to be patience because if, if you rush you turn over you lose the ball a whole lot um, I won't ask you this John Kendi I'll leave you off on this one um, have we any good umpire around the table <laughs> 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 Hi lads, uh, can we have a word on umpires please? <laughs> Who picks umpires? Is it a referee's choice or are they booked by HQ? It seems to be a lot of older men or family members of the referees. Can you ask the panel 
obviously going to be Liam in this instance, <laughs> uh, should there be uh, some form of formal training for umpires? I, I presume there is a well, formal training for I think for the county level, they do bring in the umpires and stuff like that. But yeah, it's the, it's the referees, family or friends, because... The county league matches, they go to all the county league matches, they get nothing for they get a bit of a dinner for it. And you know, it's it's something that yeah, maybe the Crow that Crow Park should be looking at. I always kinda of said that maybe Kerry should have uh, a refereeing team. Which means you have a referee and you have maybe three or four of our top referees then with him and, and they travel the country. It's like the NBA. There's there's NBA basketball teams that they have their basketball team and soc- soccer the whole lot instead of bringing your auntie or, or not your auntie your uncle or cousin or something like that mm. but to be fair like I, I do a lot of umpiring for a couple of referees and it's it's impossible to get people to go out on a Sunday mm. and isn't that the reality of it yeah. I mean it's a thankless enough test to be a referee that instance uh, you go to a match you you need two linesmen obviously we're talking about maybe club now yeah. rather than inter-county uh, chances are you, you won't have them yeah. uh, unless it's a championship game and you're either stuck with bringing your next door neighbour or yeah. your brother, yep. uh, who you trust probably more often exactly. than, than the, the guy that you might just pick up by accident on the day because you will have plenty of volunteers that will want to go down behind the posts and want to do umpiring. So obviously you have to bring at least two. Yeah, and usually the referees would make, might have might have a seven or eight fellas who they can call on call on because mm-hmm. look it's very unfair that you have me going to a Belly Mac game, say in Belly Mac. Or a county league game in Belly Mac, and you on your phone, player. maybe. And uh, yeah, and the <laughs> next thing, the referee gets a game, a monster final, and he won't bring me, and he brings someone else. Mm-hmm. You know, so they bring their they bring their team. So no, I do. Uh, that's yeah. This the other side of that. No, people will start giving up with nepotism, the whole lot. The guy you bring, you'll trust more, will you? They trust more, yeah, yeah. And uh, and all these referees, the, the four guys they have. They're not, they're not guys they picked out of the sky and that just showed up for the game for an inter-county match. They've been umpiring for maybe yeah. two or three years with them. Maybe maybe 20 or 30 games a year before they go to this. You know, so it's, but yeah, the umpire has only a, a, a certain role in as well, which is only its scores. Or if I'm umpiring next and John hits the corner back, a, a clatter, I can call that. But if the ball's picked up off the ground or if there's a push or anything like that, that's not my call. Mm-hmm. You no, know, I can't do anything about it. You know, so it's it's point where we're in the stand. Things. Yes, but exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Behind the wire, maybe. Yeah. Come here, we'll take a quick break and afterwards we'll talk about the Galway game. Now, we all sort of agreed uh, ahead of last week's Hogan Cup final that was going to be a big ask for Mercy Mountalk. I mean, they certainly had a fantastic season. First Kerry Cup win, first Munster win, first All Ireland final as well. Um, but they came undone, Liam, uh, by probably a superior team, to be fair. They were. Um, look, they put up a good fight, we could say, for. 40, 45 minutes but at the end oh, I kind of broke them down um, a few mistakes which you do expect I suppose at that level you know, and I know I punished them um, but no the, the, the Tyrone crowd they were they were they were they were that little bit better all through really you know, uh, they were a lot ternacious. Um, they had a, they kind of had a diamond there. Their, no, their number six, Callum Daly, two very good midfielders, uh, Donahue and Donnelly. Uh, Donnelly kick was a five, five or six points. And then up front, they had McCulloch there and Dylan in the full forward line. Rory McCulloch Rory, was, was Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and I think these are guys we're going to see with the under-20s with Tyrone we keep an eye out for them because they're really standout standout players whereas on the other side Mount Hawk they never seem to got going you know, the legs looked heavy um, when they got opportunities maybe to, to attack we just didn't have the leg to go the, the, the legs to go, go past them you know, but I think they'll, they'll be disappointed you know, it, it, things never went never went the way they, they were hoping I'd say yeah and, and yet it was back-to-back wins for Oma so I mean they obviously had that in their legs See, the work they, been they had in, that yeah. experience yeah. Um, they knew how to win, obviously. Um, and even in the first half when, I suppose, Mount Hawk were, I suppose, on top of a different stage in the first half, to be fair, even though they were 7-6 down at half-time, Oma never panicked. They never panicked. And that's experience as well, I suppose, yeah. yeah. And like they were, they, someone was telling us above in the press box that it'd be like truly having only one school Mm-hmm. No, yeah. so you can imagine if if the Green and, and the Mount Hawk were together, what kind of a football team would you you'd have there? Mm-hmm. No, so but at home I have that's why they had they had so many good players in the, la- in the last couple of years. No, so but it was no mean feat. Look at Mount Hawk; they have gathered momentum in the last couple of years. They won they won the they won it this year, and they got to the to Ireland final. So they need they need to build on that. And there's a lot of players there. I think we'll be keeping an eye out for the under twenties, obviously with the minors over over the o- over the years. So we'll be hoping these fellas can push on from that. Yeah, absolutely, John. I had them in, in here after they won the Hogan Cup and the one thing that struck me was that um, 
they were very mature kids. Yeah. I mean, kids from the wrong world, totally yeah. from. Um, they knew about their football. Uh, they trained exceptionally hard. Um, they kind of lived and died by it. Uh, and the, the, the school football actually meant something to them because they're all from Art Furt and they're from yeah. Mitchells and they're from all around Trillina Gale and, and the whole lot. School football is unique in that instance, John. For, for that moment in time, it brings together players from different clubs who are probably battering each other, probably even doing it tonight maybe in, yep. in, in a league final game or something um, but for that moment in time it brings that unity together and Aidan O'Shea managed that uh, and Luke Mulligan as well uh, so it's difficult to manage but it, it's great to see it and I remember their journey I mean their journey a couple of years ago they weren't even in this right, they, yeah. were, they were playing yeah. B and they were playing C and you know they, they were nearly the people who wanted to get in the draw you know you were saying so the, the, the journey is magnificent for them Oh fantastic achievement you know and it will be tarnished for a bit by the by the result of the last day but look when they look back in the year fantastic you know school with no real tradition behind it yeah. but you know getting the Cunnivory and getting mm. the Croke Park and uh, you know a few things didn't go their way like Liam said particularly the two goals they were on about the better team there's no doubt about it but like these guys uh, Aidan and, and his management team great credit due to them and some great footballers there and uh, you know I think that uh what, what it means to the school and to the people it came through like when when they won the Cardinavari bringing up Buddy O'Grady when, when Norton right. Ferris was accepting the cup I think that's that's what football is well, about that, be a sta- that's a standout that, moment that's a standout year, moment actually, yeah. you know when yeah. the year is over we look back yeah. that is one of the big things this man has he's, he's, he's given his life to the GA Buddy Grady and to be part of a huge victory of history mm-hmm. it was brilliant and the families would be disappointed yeah. it was a great day in Croke Park you know the winners take all of course but a lot of satisfaction to be got from it yeah. and it's a, it's a long journey and they're on that and hopefully they'll, they'll have many more days there. And I would agree with Don, like f- school football is special. It is yeah, special it's because special. these are guys that I suppose you mess with for, as I call it, for five or six years <laughs> and, and you can go out and play football and have a, have a bit of fun and you know, and next to all of a sudden you realise, Jesus, we're not bad and you go, you get the finals and you win finals and I suppose going out for after winning the game then you go for your burgers and chips and you're having a bit of crack and some fellas robbing some fellas bag and all, all this kind of stuff. It's, you know, so but that's school football. school did you go to? Robbing <laughs> fellas bags? No, that's, that's, that's that's, that's the fun. <laughs> that's the fun we have with these because you're you're coming from different clubs, yeah. and it's you know, it's it's a great way of kind of coming coming together. And you no, know, the school football is special. Before we wrap up this evening, something special is birthdays. Obviously, I missed this birthday last week. I, I wouldn't be left to get call him on a big. Happy 10th birthday to Jerry Galvin out there in Kilcommon. Uh, half a rat more man, of course, uh, as an extension to that. Uh, the staff of the Presentation Monastery School in Killarney want to wish Mike Reardon his 40th birthday. 4 0. We voted the rat more man now, but I'm going out with him even further now because he was a Kerry Minor for you. He was, that's right. Do you, do you really know that now? Or is yeah, that, I, just, uh, I, I, is that a surprise? <laughs> or is that a surprise? Uh, Does it shock football. you to think that a guy who is now celebrating his 40th birthday was a Kerry Minor of you? <laughs> yeah, it's, I'll tell you, it's frightening, Donald. And you know, I suppose that's part of the G as well. I was involved going back a long time with Charlie Nelligan as a selector and the great Derry Crowley and, uh, you know, Mikey Sheehy and the late Junior Murphy, great people. Mm-hmm. But when you look at the journey we've all been on, but then you meet the players afterwards, they've changed and we have changed. But yeah. but that, that bond is still there, you know, and uh, a lot of them are involved in school teams now yes. and involved in club teams it's great to see but it's a cycle, Mike, really. Mike was a great forward a great player and uh, you know he scored uh, two or three in the minor game one night against some crowd from Clare did you? he did yeah that we, puts, that puts we wish him happy birthday as well <laughs> 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 we probably took him off after <laughs> um, come here 30 seconds, we have to mention St. Pat's and Tralee CBS, both in the Froome Cup, obviously Tralee CBS uh, an old school at, at this level St. Pat's isn't one no, it's it's great again, and it's like the journey. So you go for burgers. And <laughs> <laughs> That's the place where we had the power bags <laughs> taken and boots taken and everything. But yeah, look, St. Pat's are on a, an upper curve. Started a couple of years ago, winning the Russell Cup, and there's great work being done out there by the by the whole school, by Pam McCarthy and the whole lot of them. And uh, long may it continue. And the Froome Cup is is just a, another step towards of the uh, of the curve going up. Absolutely sure it's, it's, it's the pathway to, to, to where Mount Hawk are, exactly. are, are, yeah. are going in. in the only disappointing, I think, is is it over in here. Absolutely, if you go to Cork to win it, huh? Yeah, you know, so two Kerry teams have to go to Cork to play a game of football. It's, no, it's a pity. One, they will win it, that's all that matters. Um, listen, guys, thanks very much. Um, up after break, we talk County League.